Okay, we're going to try uh, a hard question to determine the shape of something. We have an unknown transition metal complex, MLX3+. Plus. We don't know what it is. We know M is the transition metal, L is the, are the ligands. We don't know how many ligands there are, but it's been isolated. The, the ligand L is neutral. The metal uh, is in the manganese group. So it's in that column of manganese. We know that it's low spin. It's slightly paramagnetic. And uh, the color is between yellow and orange. So we know that the ligand is neutral, the metal is in the manganese group. We know it's slightly uh, paramagnetic, it's low spin, and the color is between yellow and orange. So uh, the first question is, what's the electronic configuration? Or how many electrons do we have? Well, if it's in the manganese group, it's the seventh column over. Because the ligand is neutral, the metal must have a three plus charge. Because the ligand is neutral. So if it's in the seventh column, seven minus three, that's four electrons, and we write D4. Okay. Now, uh, we want to determine the shape, and the problem gives us three to choose from. It, the problem says it can be octahedral, tetrahedral, or square planar. We don't know which of those three it is. So, uh, we need to use the information above to determine if it's octahedral, tetrahedral, or square planar. So, in order to solve this, whenever you have more than one choice, you've got to draw all the CFT diagrams. So, let's do that. If it is octahedral, then the CFT diagram will look like this. Two on top, three on the bottom. If it's tetrahedral, the CFT diagram looks exactly the opposite. Three on top, two on the bottom. And if it's square planar, this is the one where it looks like the Eiffel Tower. So we've got these three possibilities to choose from. Let us fill in the electrons. We know it's low spin up here. We know it's low spin. And so that means it's strong field. So from low spin, that's the same as saying it's strong field. Or that delta is large. So we've got large delta here. Delta is large. So let's fill in the electrons here for four electrons. One, two, three, four. Because delta is large, I put the fourth one on the lower level. That's octahedral. Let's try tetrahedral. One, two, because delta is large, I'm going to keep everything on the bottom level as long as possible. Three, four. And then for the square planar, uh, I get one, two, delta's large again, keep them at the low level, three and four. Because I know that um, this is slightly paramagnetic, the only possibility is the one that's paramagnetic, which is the one on the left. That's the only possibility that can be slightly paramagnetic. The other two are diamagnetic. So, can't be that. The next part of the problem uh, is actually a little bit of a math problem. It says, uh, calculate delta mathematically. We want to know what delta is. Well, if you had to do that, 
you'd have to use this formula. So let's write out what all the constants are. This is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. C is a constant, 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then what's lambda? Well, it tells us that the color uh, is between yellow and orange. Since it's between yellow and orange, let's take a look at our color wheel. Yellow and orange, that's 580 nanometers. So we know from the color wheel that it's 580 nanometers, which is 580 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Because to do calculations like this, I want to keep everything uh, in SI units. Okay, so how do you find delta? We just uh, plug it into the formula. Delta is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That's H. C is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8. And lambda is 580 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. It turns out that delta is 4.62 times 10 to the minus, I think this says 19 joules. Oh, I made one little mistake. Let's fix that. Let's look back at the color bill here. Made one little mistake. It's a common mistake, so. Yes, success. Okay. 580 is actually, it's the color that you see. But to, when you plug into the formula, you must use the color absorbed. So I, I, I wrongly used 580. I should have used 430 on the opposite side. That was my mistake. So whenever you use that delta equation, you have to use the delta that is absorbed. So let me fix that really quick here. So hopefully now that I make it, you will not make this mistake. 430 is the number we're actually looking for, not 580. Uh, and, and this is the answer. Pre-calculated that. Okay, so far so good. There's one more part to this question. The last part of the question says, uh, if a weaker field ligand was coordinated or bonded to M instead of the ligand that we had originally, what would you expect the color to be, yellow or orange? So, so if a weaker field ligand was coordinated to M, weaker than L, then what is the new color? Is it yellow or orange? Well, if we get a weaker field, that means delta has just decreased. If delta has just decreased, then lambda would increase because they're inversely proportional. Let's take a look at the color wheel. If lambda has just uh, increased, we've just gone into the orange range. So a slightly higher amount of nanometers. So if you put a weaker field ligand, it starts to go in the orange direction. Yeah. And I didn't want to have you do all four, so I just limited it to three out of four. 